All right, so uh, here's here's the quick agenda for the the first talk. Uh, I'm going to discuss what exactly data drop is um, and uh, how how you can use it, the different interfaces that we have for it. Uh, and then I'm going to go more in depth into the two main interfaces that uh, are the most developed. That's the data drop website and the, the Wolfram language client for DataDrop. Uh, and then we'll do a couple of uh, quick examples. Um, so, so let's go ahead and, and get started. Uh, so DataDrop is basically a data aggregator in the cloud. Uh, but it does more than just accumulate data. It also standardizes that data into a computable format uh, and stores it in our cloud so that it can be easily accessed and makes it available for instant computation in all of Wolfram's products. Um, so the data drop, it, it lives uh, in the Wolfram cloud. Uh, it's built out of the standard tools that are part of our programming cloud. Uh, it's made out of uh, cloud-based APIs and forms and cloud storage. Um, it's also fully integrated into the Wolfram language. Uh, so. And, and we'll, we'll show more of that uh, in, in a few minutes. Uh, so the, the first thing to discuss is uh, data bins. So all of the data in DataDrop is stored in data bins, uh, the, sort of the fundamental unit of DataDrop. Uh, a, a user can have many data bins, and a single data bin can have many users. Um, every data bin has a unique ID, and it has an owner. And that owner can set all sorts of settings for the data bin. Uh, they can set the permissions on the data bin. So it can be uh, public or private. They can give uh, write permissions or read permissions to individual users um, as, as they please. Uh, and perhaps the most important setting is the interpretation for the bin. So you can define data semantics for the bin, which tells it what type of data to expect and how to uh, interpret the data that it receives. And we'll see more about that uh, throughout the presentation. Um, so uh, first, uh, the ways to add data to a data bin. We tried to make adding data as easy and open as possible. Uh, there are lots of different ways you can add data. You can email it to us. You can tweet it to us. Um, you can use the DataDrop website. Uh, you can use the Wolfram Language Client. So those are the two interfaces that we're going to be looking at in the next few minutes. Uh, you can also create uh, a form. We'll see that in the presentation, too. And once you've created that form, you can use it on our cloud, or you can embed it on your own website uh, for other people to use. Um, and for developers and devices and uh, sort of low-level applications, there's there's an API that you can use directly. Uh, so the, the, the web API uh, any, it can be used, anything that can make an HTTP request, so anything that has internet access can add data to your data bin, um, which is uh, really nice. So uh, once you've added data to your data bin, it's immediately available from within the Wolfram language, and uh, that means that you can use it on any of the Wolfram products. Um, so right now we can we can access data from a data bin that I've previously created. Um, it doesn't look too pretty. We'll see exactly how I created this data in a few minutes. We'll we'll look at this data uh, in in a little more depth. And um, so we can do this from anything like Mathematica or the Programming Cloud or Wolfram Desktop, any Wolfram language product. Your data is part of it if it's in data drop. Uh, you can also access data in Wolfram Alpha. You can view it there, um, so uh, which is nice. So the first the first interface that we're going to look at is the the data drop website. Um, so datadrop.wolframcloud.com. So uh, this is the the main landing page for uh, the data drop website, uh, and this has all sorts of uh, information about using DataDrop. Um, it, it has more information about all the different interfaces. It has more information about defining your interpretation and typical use cases. 
Um, so if you want to learn more about DataDrop, then we can fit into this uh, hour-long presentation. Uh, this is a great place to start looking. Um, also from this page, you can follow a link to create a data bin. Uh, we'll do that in a minute, but for right now, I'm going to uh, go to this My Data Bins link in the top right, which shows um, shows my data bins. Uh, so you can see right here I have four of them. Um, this shows the name and the ID, uh, when they were last used. Um, so let's just look at this one for an example. So so here I, here I have a data bin that's logging uh, temperatures in a refrigerator. Uh, so I have a device that's sending sending values to a data bin, and they're interpreted as uh, degrees in Fahrenheit. Um, so from this bin page, you know, I can view the recent entries, I can see the bin settings, I can change things like the name and the permissions on the data bin. Um, but uh, I, I, can, I can analyze, I can open this up in Wolfram Alpha. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, sometimes this can take just a minute. Uh, so there we go. So you can see. So this is this is a public Wolfram Alpha site. Since my data bin is is publicly open, uh, anybody can can come and query the data bin ID on Wolfram Alpha and see see the temperature over there, you know in two hour samples and see a history. You know all all this analysis is generated automatically from the most recent data in the bin. Um, so now to go back. To the data drop website, let's go ahead and create a new data bin. Um, so we can name this one uh, data drop intro demo. Uh, we can add data to it. Um, here's a good entry. Uh, we can add another one. Uh, an entry. So right now we're just using text data, um, which is is not quite as interesting. But this is just to show the basic uh, use of DataDrop. Um, so th so that shows some basic usage of the DataDrop website. Um, so now I'm going to take this bin ID and we're going to continue uh, back in the the Wolfram language client here. So now that I have this bin ID, I can access the same data bin. Um, in the Wolfram language. Uh, so by just by just using that ID, I can load that data bin. You can see it knows I have my two entries. I can look at those. Uh, I can add another entry. Now there's three entries in the bin. Um, so you can sort of seamlessly transition between different interfaces. Uh, you know, specifically the website and the Wolfram language are are, are the two most developed ways to to really access your data and work with it. Um, so now that we've sort of seen this trivial example, uh, let's move to one that's a little more interesting. Um, so I, I showed you that plot earlier that wasn't very pretty, and that was this data bin here that I've created. Um, and so this data bin I added data to automatically by using this next evaluation. Uh, and so I automatically created this data bin while I was creating this slideshow that I'm presenting to you right now. So what this does is every time I press uh, a digit key on my keyboard, um, it, it adds that digit to, to my data bin. Uh, so like this first line, one, if any time I press a 1, it adds a 1 to the data bin, um, and so on. Uh, so, so this was automatically generated data just as I was going about uh, my normal work. It, I can use this to track things. Uh, so just to give an idea of how I set up this data bin, we can look at the, the options here. Um, you can see that uh, it, uh, it has a, a, a long ID and a short ID. It has a name. Uh, but most importantly, notice that it has this interpretation. So this, is, this bin is expecting a parameter named digit, and it's expecting that parameter to be an integer. Um, so this is. This is a, a simple example of defining the interpretation for a data bin. Um, so, so now let's let's now that we've know understand this, uh, let's let's look at a couple more of the things you can do 
uh, visualization and analysis style. So uh, a lot of the functions in the Wolfram language work directly on data bins. So you can uh, view the values in the data bin. Um, so there's all the different keystrokes I made. Um, you can see the frequency of each value of each digit um, using histogram. You can see I, I didn't have any uh, sixes. Um, you can so this is basically doing the same dateless plot we saw earlier, but with uh, with a better styling. Um, so you can see I did most of the development on this a couple weeks ago, um, and then uh, as I was rehearsing, I probably did a few more uh, key, you know number keystrokes. Um, so that's that's how we got to to where we are. Um, I can deploy a web form. Oh, I, right now I'm actually logged in as the wrong user. Give me one second, and then I will um, log in as the proper user. See, this this bin is set up so that if you saw on the previous page, the permissions were not totally public. So um, only certain users can uh, create a web form. So uh, now that I have this, this web form, I can open that in any browser. And yeah, I could add a new digit. You see, the most recent digit was four. Let's add a five. It says thank you. If we come back here, you know, there's, there's a five in the bin now. So, um, so that, that web form, even though, even though only someone with privileges to create it can create it, uh, I, I can share the bin that way because this bin, let's just look at those permissions real quick. Um, so everyone has permissions to read it, but not everyone has permissions to write to it. So that would mean that this form is only available for people who have permissions to write to it as well. Um, so now let's create one more data bin. Um, and this data bin I'm going to use as a survey for all of you. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to create this bin and create a form and let you guys use that to uh, submit data. Uh, I'm going to try to get your ages, where you live, uh, what your favorite animal is, and how long you've been using uh, Wolfram Research products, whether that's Mathematica or Alpha or the prob programming cloud or uh, anything that anything we have. Um, so here I'm creating the data bin with that interpretation and uh, deploying a web form.